Hello. This is a particularly exciting episode of Adventures in Pop. I think we're up to episode 35. This is the introduction to the very first track ever to be released by Rothman and Jacobs. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what we're going to do is um, we're going to have a look at an interview, well, a chat, an interview, that's a bit posh, uh, a chat that um, I had a little bit earlier on today with my very good friend Johnny, who is, has been for the last 40 years, yes, count them, since 1981 to 2021, kind of pretty much exactly 40 years of songwriting partnership. And finally, this week, we are releasing our very first single. So the interview will kind of tell you everything you need to know, give you a little bit of the history, uh, introduce the track, and then without much further ado, we'll actually go straight to the song in question, and we'll be giving you a fantastic exclusive uh, worldwide advance release of Crocodile Tears, which is um, out on Friday, but I'm gonna be showing you the video right at the end of this little bit of film. So if I were you, I'd watch the whole of the interview and stay around for the very first playing of Crocodile Tears. I'll see you later and I'm gonna hand over to, uh, well, myself and Johnny from a little bit earlier on this afternoon. Welcome, uh, Johnny, this is Johnny. I have to say to, you know, for everyone who's not met Johnny, but I have, um, can you remember it was your sister who put us first in touch? What can you remember what you thought when we first met and thought about writing songs together? Can you remember what, do you think it's a good idea? Just me out, first of all. Yeah. How do I dress you? Do I dress you as Cy? Do I dress you as Simon? You I know, think, what, what, what's the best thing to address you as? Quite, it's quite tricky. I'd, what do you normally address me as? Cy? Is that Cy? Is that okay? Is that okay, you know, from the stage name perspective? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me just think. Okay. About it. Yeah, okay, I think I can go with Sai. What about you? Are you sir, or do we just drop that? <laughs> yeah, go on. I can be whoever you want me to be. Yeah, no, exactly, me too. I once went to a meeting where someone said, are you Gerald? And I said, no, but I can be. <laughs> anyway, right. yeah, anyway. Tell, me, tell me, tell me, tell me, right at the beginning, what, what did you think when, you know, when we first met, you, did you think, oh, this is, this is going to be brilliant, or did you think, you know, who's this geezer? I mean, I, to be quite frank with you, I always got, I was, I always got excited when meeting people that you know you had a, a, a common um, interest with, particularly when it came to music, common passion. That's more of a word, common passion. Then I was always excited. I was always excited, and I always wanted to hear. I mean, that 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 was the, you know, you you want to hear what they they're into and what they're doing particularly as, you know, there aren't that many people at the time, if you want, that actually said that they actually wrote, wrote music, played the piano, exactly the same thing as me, so. It was, yeah. that, that was, you know, I agree with that. That was, I don't think I knew anybody else actually who did that, so there was nobody else I knew. And at the time, what, what kind of music were you into? Can you remember back in the early eighties, what was like, what were your, musical influences because I remember we talked a lot I remember we oh we often played Elvis Costello and stuff like that but that wasn't yeah, no, I remember I, I actually remember driving to Oxford when we first met and me playing I think it was Punch the Clock it yeah. was during the summer it was a wonderful 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 day and you just had the windows down and we were blaring out Punch the Clock and whatever and yeah. uh, no, it wasn't it was trust it was trust. It was trust. It was. I remember that's right. That's right. I did really love the album. Actually, I still do. I think it's underrated. But what else? What else was Great album. What else did you listen to? Like, you know, back in your teens? My biggest influence was always sort of sort of Roxy music and earlier progressive stuff. But obviously time had moved on, time had moved on by then anyway. But also I, I just love music per se, I think, because I love Motown. I love some of the tracks for Sound Philadelphia. I love Stax. 
And I remember Stuff, you playing yeah, Stack Baby as well. And you played me Earth, Wind and Fire. I mean, you you played it was that album All in All by Earth, Wind and Fire, which I still kind of associate with you because I didn't re I knew the hits, but I didn't know the rest of the album. So that's still a great yeah, brilliant, but that album was brilliant. And I got I got I remember I got it played and I just couldn't I every track. Mm. That was a fantastic album, I think. To and me, that was remember, the thing and do you remember also that album? Was it three plus three? The Isley Brothers one that had <clears> Summer that Breeze, Summer Breeze, and a whole bunch of other things. I mean, Moving was, down the highways. Yeah, of my life yeah. And yes, that's right. Just the brilliant. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a good album. Blimey, good. No, 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 no. But that that was actually because that always reminds me of the summer. That that album, sort of sitting around with friends and stuff, and that blaring out. Yeah, no, me too. Uh, yeah. Exactly the same, yes. But, oh God, a long time ago. So then, right, so we got together, then we started writing songs. We had a band. I know we, there's some aspects of this we might not want to go into, because, but we were we were a band for, I don't know, for a couple of years, trying... Different, different bands. Different bands. Yeah. Different bands, because we started off with the guys that were in a psychedelic band that had a squat in Notting Hill, and I remember band to take them so from we the squat. Them. That's right, we, yeah. we sort of persuaded them to help us out on our very first demos, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they, they were great. I mean, they, they were great. Good. I was going to say, they were pretty good. And then, but then we, for some reason, we couldn't, obviously we couldn't use them forever. So we had to get our own band in. And apart from Wiz, who I, who, uh, you know, is an exception in, on sax, the others, I don't know, it was, it, it was tricky. It was very, very tricky because I just think that um, there was, you know, certain people had huge egos and, and there was always a battle there um, and multiple ideas for every single track. I think I know, and and we, didn't, we didn't really make it clear that we didn't expect our band to be a democracy. It was supposed to be our band, wasn't it? And I don't think we were, we were a bit, maybe we were a bit shy of just saying that because it would have cleared up lots of... Listen, we can always be wiser. We can all, all be wiser after the event. Can't yeah, no, no, that's definitely true. Anyway, so then we <laughs> got to be a band because it was too much hassle and it was a lot. I mean, Wiz, Wiz was the com that was, that, that was the common thread all the way through. Even when we got to the studio, to the time in the studio, because he's a brilliant sex player, but also, I've got to say, influenced by Roxy Music. That was... Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. And but whenever we, I mean, we, I think we went out of our way to try and find room for a saxophone in some tracks because we just wanted to include him. And and that, the saxophone, absolutely, and it was worth absolutely. it. Absolutely, no, no problem with that at all. So then we, so then we, we worked with Ed in in his recording. First of all, in Acton, wasn't it? In his recording studio there, and then it all kind of started going digital. We were at that moment when it swapped over from actual tape where he had a razor and cut it through to going you know digital and us moving off to, to Hendon with him in his little Hendon place. Well well bearing by even before that you had because Ed and Denny his partner had signed a deal with Ireland. That's right. And Ireland had supplied them with this huge 24 track mixing desk which they had to have a crane to take it into the studio at the time, which was completely mad. Um, and that kind of like, I think he worked with the Christians, the, the lead That's right, that's Christian, right. And so they you know, were... and a couple of other things, but but he kind of, I don't know, just all petered out. It's as though I didn't completely forgot that they supplied him with the studio, with, you know, with everything within the studio. What was the deal there? Were they supposed to be sort of songwriting for Island? Yeah, songwriting and producing. And then, and it gradually, yeah. So obviously, just fizzled away, didn't it? At some point. Yeah. Well, the thing is, there was a partnership of three. There was Eddie Henry. Yeah, and Danny. And Henry was the person that we'd be doing a mix, and he would surreptitiously turn a couple of knobs because yeah. he felt that was the best thing for the track. I don't even remember that. Yeah, that was. Yeah. yeah. And we, so right, so we got in the habit of watching him like a, you know. Like a hawk, make sure he didn't do that. And actually, then after a while, he stopped turning up when we were there. I think that yes, yes, yes. I mean, we've got to be and, careful what we say because these people are all probably, you know, less than they're probably still alive, and so they should be. Or but, living in Gibraltar. Or they, I'm sure they're living in Gibraltar because Ed said. Jib, jib, jib. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah from there... We had years. We had years with Ed, and then gradually, the whole, the whole kind of ability to have home equipment gradually began to happen, didn't it? That you could replicate what we were using in the studio with Ed with stuff at home. And slowly, and but surely, that became a, a possibility, didn't it? Yeah, but we always, you know, but we talked about that. It was an arduous process, I think. And, and, and uh, Ed, Ed was extremely pedantic, right? I mean, just, just going back, I remember when they first got that drum machine, that the drum machine he had to use then, that he had to program. That's you know, you had to program that particular sound to work for X amount of bars and stuff like it was that. A, was it a sequencer? It was something, it was, it was yeah, like... It was a sequencer. Sequencer. And, and we'd never used a sequencer before. It was really exciting to have a sequencer. Yeah, um, yeah. And also samples. First time that we actually started to use yeah. samples, you know, which was, um, which was all very, you know, all very, very, very exciting. But then we had, you know, I think we learned a lot from it. I think yeah, a lot yeah. Anyway, so then, so then we started doing a lot of songwriting, much more at home, mostly at your house, because you had stuff, and that was that made it uh, really, you know, easy, and we didn't have to pay so much money, and it was, you know, and we could do it ourselves, and and actually the songs, the songs that we're looking to release now are kind of mostly written in that period of, I'd say what two thousand and five to two thousand and whatever. 12 nine. thing yeah nine and then up to 2014 i think yeah yeah i when I, I described in an earlier thing uh that our writing process was that nothing happened unless we were both in the room how i mean how would you when we were writing stuff together how would you what was how did it work how can you would you if somebody said to you right what because it obviously it wasn't like one writes the words and one writes the melodies. It was nothing like that at all. It, it was both of us do everything kind of thing. But but it wasn't quite. I mean, it was, there was a bit of a division of labour, but not much. I mean, no. We used to. I think that. I mean, how does the song start? Either either you got a riff together or something like that, working stuff out. I might have heard a couple of couple of things that you played, and I said, "Hang on a minute, go back to that a minute." can't this go there instead of there and stuff like that. And it used to be very, sort of, it's very, very democratic process. And the best way, I, I think, I think the only thing is obviously is that you, you during that time, you learn to compromise. And whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. I really don't know. I think for the stuff that we wrote and listening to it, I think it was a good thing. Because we, I think you, know, we have, you have to compromise, otherwise we wouldn't have lasted. It would have no, been impossible. No. And then, and then from there, I mean, the words, I mean, what do we do? We sat down and said, you know, oh, you know, maybe somebody had something on their mind that they had to get out. And then we started talking about it, then we developed the idea, and then we just start writing lyrics based on that idea. And I think that's how, you, uh, how, how it always worked. Even with the arrangements and the productions and stuff like that, might have had an arrangement, you start getting it down, and then, then you just say, no, hang on a minute, have, instead of doing that, why don't you do this? And, you know, or, you know, it, and it was always, it was always. You were, you were always looking out for new, you were the technology man. I mean, you, you were getting new things that I, that I barely ever understood. But, you know, we had to kind of work out how something worked as well as. Um, <laughs> it should normally take us about here. I know, but, but, that, but, but the thing was, because the technology was moving so fast, you, you had to do that, didn't you? We had to, we had to kind of stay on board with, stuff with 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 technology with new with new gear that did things in a different way yeah and but also the different sounds and the fact that our quality of sounds i think got better i mean i mean we we used sample tank for years mm. um and i think they still got great sounds i listen to it now and i think they still got really really good sounds particularly guitars actually mm -hmm. um and Om omnisphere spectrosonics um uh, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, funny enough, actually, I got from I, IK Multimedia, I got the um, the Philharmonic, which I always wanted to. And when we first looked at it, I think it was about 800, 900 pounds, but now it's about a couple hundred quid, 100, 200 pounds, something like that. So, uh, so this is quite exciting. So, so, right, on Friday, Crocodile Tears is going to, 
is, is, is being released. And it's going to be the very, although it's not the first thing we ever wrote, of course, it's going to be our first single. So it's going to be the first thing anybody hears that is us. Crocodile Tears, can you remember anything specific about that track or what you thought of it or what, 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 what caused us to write it? Or um, was there anything specific about, because I could, I, if you ask, you know, if I'm asking that question, I'm thinking, I, I don't know why, I don't know what, I don't know why we wrote it. I always thought it was good, um, but I don't know what inspired it or where we thought we were going with it, but it just seemed like a good track. And then we got yeah. two backing vocals on that, you know, on the verse, on the, on the choruses. Yeah. And it sounded great, but. So it was certainly one of our, it was certainly one of our earlier ones. Right, of the two of us working uh, things. I cannot, to be quite frank with you, out of the tracks that we have, it was, or I had it in my mind, in my consciousness, being one of my least favourite tracks. But now that we've revisited it, actually, I, I really like the lyrics. I think they're fun lyrics. I just think it's a fun song, actually. Mm. It's a mm. fun song because it's, it is all about crocodile tears, but in a very tongue-in-cheek, tongue-in-cheek way and I think it works and I think it's a good it's a good track it really is it's a good track and I always I always thought it was going to be very amusing to call our album whenever we get to that which hopefully in 2022 better late better late than never but forget the the never but you don't need that just better late dot 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 and because it's been a while and you know it most certainly has we could have done this if we'd if if this had been an you know, an opportunity that was available 20 years ago, I think we'd probably done it, but this whole thing with, you know, Spotify and doing it yourself is is a, a more, well, more you've, revolution. You've created this opportunity, Simon. I mean, you've been much more prolific than myself, that's for sure. And um, this is all much more familiar to you. Yeah, it is. Well, <laughs> it's partly due to, I mean, lockdown has really helped in terms of having a little bit too much time. <laughs> so what are you going to do? Uh, it's 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 better than I don't know. It's better than just sleeping or you know, absolutely, absolutely, or absolutely. getting very stressed that you're not really doing enough. You know, paid work. So um, we'll park those things. But you also have YouTube now, for instance, which which you can look at. Yeah, and that's have, in, uh, yeah absolutely. You know, that's a revolution. Which which really didn't have then, you know. Oh, it just started, but not really, you know, as such. But now, now that you have forums, you have links that bring you over to the, you know, it's, it, I mean, it's a great way. It's, it's a great way, uh, way to share stuff. Um, yeah, and obviously, you know, and because it's so much easier, millions of people are doing it. And then you have the same problem in the end of how do you, how do you get noticed? How do you, how do you cut through the fact there are millions of people who can all do, who can all make music in their bedroom and put stuff on YouTube, and some of it's really good. And you know, how do you cut through all that and get noticed? That's 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 the. Okay, so I'll leave that. I'll leave that point to you, Simon. Thank you. No, that's great. <laughs> good. No, that's, that's, yeah, no but that's, ne that's never going to stop being the challenge, is it? I mean, that's always going to be. How do you get noticed? Is always the tricky one. But yeah, so yeah, it, it's. Uh, it, I've really look. I've really enjoyed it, and. Um, some things do better. I, look, I've always said there are songs that I've released where I think, oh, that's really good. People are going to love that. And and the take up is really tiny. And you sort of think, what's that about? And then other things where you really don't expect it. And it's and it, you know, goes like a goes like a train. And and I just worked out that there's I can't predict any of that. I have no idea what what people will like or, or not like of stuff that I've been because I'm 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 just too involved with it I can't I can't be objective really and I and that's pretty much the same with all of our stuff as well is it's quite hard to really detach yourself and think what will people think of this I, I've got no idea yeah no no I've got a clue what people would think of it but I remember having friends over and subjecting them to uh to us on the piano and, and they couldn't wait to go home but this way you know if people want to go home they can that's right. They, they can switch. <laughs> I, I, I did a little. Yes, I talked about this in one of my yeah. video cast thing, which was that awful thing when you think that this is the moment when I'm gonna. This is the moment when I have to play 
all my new material. I've just got, don't worry, I, I've only got 12 songs to play you. So just, you know, and then you get really annoyed when somebody so much as, you know, coughs. Um, I mean, the, the people, <laughs> The people who are least interested in what I'm doing are the people who know me best. And, and that's, that's, I think that's how it works. And <laughs> you get over it. Um, you know, my family, I, you know, they kind of, you know, they know that I'm broadcasting on a regular basis. Interest or questions? No, bless them. I, I can say whatever I like because they, obviously they won't be watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there is. I wouldn't say that there's an air of excitement over here either. You know, <laughs> but um, you know, who knows? I like to think I'm pleasantly surprised by what I hear, and it was not. You know, it was all worth it. That's all. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's about time that that we shared that people heard it. But yeah, yeah. yeah you know that 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 we shared our stuff with people. Well, thank yeah. you. John, it's been, a, it's been a, a pleasure, of course. And thank you, Simon. Thank you for welcoming me into your gracious home. There we go. Um, well, 20 minutes um, well spent in the company of Johnny from his, um, as I say, his gracious home far away. I think you probably, if you were eagle-eyed, you might have seen his um, long-suffering, lovely girlfriend, Nadja, just walking around, you know, in the other room. Um, I, I guess you just wanted to be on the video she should have come in and just said hello next time anyway um here we go let's have a look at um the video for the brand new single rothman and jacobs here is crocodile tears i'll see you soon bye bye tell me your secret but all i can see are your crocodile tears and tell me you love me same old story for a thousand years And are you for real? Or just an illusion that soon disappears You're a Hollywood star They'll give you an Oscar for your crocodile tears I'm not gonna fall For the crazy games you play You were so Sublime, but I'm gonna be fine. Your history to me. The great pretender. Sad for the love you could have had. 